Assalamu alaikum. I'm Dr. Asim Karim and you're watching my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk about humanism and repulsive humanism in Muhammad Hanif's third novel, Redbirds. Let's proceed to the discussion. Redbird is Muhammad Hanif's third novel. It contextualizes war on terror and the post-war phase of war on terror against an unnamed third world Muslim country. Characters are drawn from the American troops, American officials, and the local population. Major Ali and Lady Flower Body represent American combat troops and US aid officials, respectively. Momo, father dear, mother dear, bro Ali, and Mutt represent the local population. Apart from that, we have unnamed folk as victims of war, a corrupt businessman, and an imposter from the medical side. Redbird carries symbolic meaning, representing bloodshed in the war and the souls of the dead people. But an exciting creation. A philosopher dog, Mutt shows the ability to empathize and objectively reflect on human misery and corruption. To me, he is an incarnation of Bula Shah's famous poem, Dogs Are Better Than You. A few words about humanism and repulsive humanism. We are all familiar with the concept of humanism. Is about, it is about anthropocentrism, valuing human nature or sanctification of human nature over and above any metaphysical or transcendental explanation of the universe. It transforms human as the standard of all things. To the religious rights, humanism originates with the denial of God and therefore it carries a secular outlook. As a concept, it is popular and prevalent in scores of disciplines and areas from anthropology to history to politics to literature and languages. Repulsive humanism is not in usage in literary studies. Instead, we have concepts like transhumanism, <clears throat> post-humanism, anti-humanism, and dehumanization. I use it here as a concept to narrate, to describe strongly or intensely disagreeable acts on the part of humans, which are repulsive to the readers. Themes. Primarily, the novel is based upon or contextualizes war on terror and the post-war phase of American war against a third world country. It also narrates American duplicity exhibited in American policies of destruction and then promises of reconstruction and practical steps to ensure humanitarian assistance to the war affected people. It is also a broad-based satire not only against American policies, but also against moral bankruptcy of the people at large. The novel also beautifully narrates cultural transformation taking place in a third world country in the, in the form of rise of new, new way of entrepreneurship. And Momo is the representative of this change taking place in the society. So is Father Dear, as we will talk about later. Finally, the novel also narrates gender disparities, commonly experienced in a third world country. We have strong men and we have weak women. Read my statement of the problem closely with a focus on of thoughts and the key areas of this presentation.
humanistic concerns. My focus on humanistic concerns in the novel is related to the five areas. First, the description of human calamity and suffering. Two, rationalism or reason. Three, cultural transformation in a third world Muslim country in the post-war times. Four, the quest for human perfectionism or human resource development. And five, moral relativism. Human sufferings and um, calamity, a post-war debacle. The whole novel is built on this idea. People are compelled to live in ordinary shelter provided by the foreign governments and the United Nations in their own country. Thus, a pathetic sense of indigenous homelessness prevails in the novel. Along with that, we see the people are fully dependent on U.S. aid for food, medicine, and shelter. We know humanism prioritizes reason as the most authentic way to know the truth. The dominance of reason in the novel is directly related to American technological advancement, predominance of technology in war, economics, and quantitative research. The novel establishes a new type of technological determinism, a technology like use of drones, smart weapons, and fighter jets, determine the flow of events, measuring war strength and assuming power over opponents. The technological predominance and human matter is further strengthened by using drones to follow down to follow down undesirable human elements. I mean terrorists in the war. Cultural transformations. The text demonstrates how the Muslim culture of the third world is changing in the post-war situation. Instead of fighting against the invaders, post-war profiteering is highlighted here. For instance, Momo, the protagonist, wants to start, start a fast-growing business and earn billions of dollars in no time. Similarly, Father Deer bucks cultural norms by charging American for his services in introducing sex education to the local population. Quest for human perfectionism. Humanism is a view of human development through constant training and learning resources. So modern humanistic discourses emphasize work hyper-efficiency. Therefore, we see human resource department introducing a culture of perfectionism and hyper-efficiency through arranging workshops and training sessions regularly for the employees. HRD policy in this context views training as a lifetime intellectual effort and modern business ethics require organization to optimize employees development again to workshops and trainings in the whole context humanism may be seen as a constant method of enhancing human efficiency in the contemporary corporate ethics or corporate sector. Hanif is aware of that. So he keeps referring to various courses and military personnel must take before a deployment. 
courses and training sessions listed in the novel are cultural sensitivity course, mandatory foreign language course, post-traumatic stress disorder sessions, and desert survival rules. Moral relativism is an essential constituent of modern thoughts of humanism. And Redbird is very clear about this. We come across a number of human rights which are contrary to fundamental moral principles. Not only that, it projects a viewpoint where morality is least important and preference is given to money, power, and financial gains. For example, the moralistic viewpoint is eclipsed by power and financial gain of the U.S. Army in the region. The U.S. wants to overcome the opponent in force and technology and reconstruct the country for monetary profit. The Muslim also prioritize business, profiteering, and money. The rise of third world entrepreneur, as shown in the novel, has shattered the traditional religious narrative of fight against invaders. Even elders like all the deer are engaged in money making through active collaboration with U.S. personal in the region. For example, selling these services for providing sex education or spreading sex education among the people. So collectively, the novel is very much clear and focused about not only the lack of moral concerns, but also the least importance given to ethics and morality in human acts and policies. Thank you for watching part one of this lecture.